Good morning, dear Zero Project uh, friends. This morning, I'll have a chat with uh, Veronica, and we will discuss the participation uh, toolbox. But first, maybe introducing myself, I'm uh, Luc Zeldrel. I'm 65 years old, and I'm wearing a white shirt. Uh, and that matches quite well with my gray hair. Veronica, welcome. How Thank do you, you feel after three days uh, Zero Conference? I feel a little bit exhausted, I must admit. Uh, it's my first Zero Project conference, and uh, there are so many actors, so many events, and uh, so much interesting content. Um, yesterday, actually, I, I went to bed at 8 o'clock after, uh, after the exhausted. end. Completely exhausted. Completely exhausted. Great. <laughs> Let's add a bit to, to the uh, interesting stuff that... Uh, was discussed here uh, the last two days, and that will be discussed uh, also today. Um, we're going to discuss this uh, participation toolbox. Can you introduce it in, in a few words? What is it? What, what it is about? So, um, CBM's Inclusive Participation Toolbox is a, a, an, a website, um, and um, we designed it um, to uh, improve the participation of organizations of persons with disabilities in international cooperation. And uh, we provide, wa want to provide information on uh, why it's important uh, to include persons with disabilities and their organizations, why is it helpful, um, how to do it, and uh, then also where to find uh, OPD partners uh, for your international cooperation projects. So okay. um, that's the okay. toolbox. But there are, there are many toolboxes out there and there are many websites uh, developed already. What is specific? What is making this toolbox something special, something new, something innovative? So um, the focus of this toolbox is um, very narrow. So we only looked at participation. We only looked at persons with disabilities. We only looked at international cooperation. And there is really no one-stop solution out there so far. And you can find a lot on the why, uh, for example, but you won't feel, uh, find practical advice anywhere at the same spot. So we want to bring together all these elements and build one toolbox uh, for the users. And could, could you explain a bit, how did you develop it? How, how did it work? Was it, was it just like sitting together in a room and starting a discussion? Or what, what type of methodology did you use to develop this, uh, this toolbox, this device? Well, the starting point was also, um, I'm, I'm in, the, uh, in advocacy work, and um, we noticed, well, we, we always lobby for a participation. We always say it's really, really important. Uh, but then we don't provide solutions because uh, then there is a lot of hesitance. W how do I actually do it? So we wanted to provide um, a solution. And we were a very small team in CBM, um, just three persons in CBM working on that. And uh, we would never say that we have all the, uh, the, the competencies necessary. Mm -hmm. So uh, we wanted to make the process as well very participatory. So we invited uh, an advisory board okay. to help us develop. Before we go into that ad advisory board, but because that sounds interesting, could you say in a few words, what, what is CBM exactly? It's a German organization, but could you give a bit of background information? CBM is a very old uh, uh, NGO, uh, international NGO. We are based in, in Germany. We okay. are over 100 years old, and okay. uh, we work for the inclusion of persons with disabilities in all areas of life uh, in uh, developing and uh, uh, countries of the global south. Okay, and an international NGO, it's financed by the German authorities, or you do fundraising? How, how is it uh, operating? So traditionally, uh, most of our uh, donors are, um, are just individuals. Okay. Uh, and then we have a small portion uh, of government funding. Okay, interesting. Let's let's go back to to the to the toolbox advisory board. Is that the beating heart of this toolbox? Uh, explain a bit. This is really the beating heart. They were so generous in their advice uh, to us. Uh, it's a multi-stakeholder board uh, of 18 people um, okay. uh, 
uh, from all over the world. Um, so we were really um, concentrating on having represented uh, all kinds of different groups. So there was one uh, mainstream NGO mm -hmm. um, working on children's rights. There were development, uh, was a development bank, GIZ was involved, and uh, most importantly, uh, the majority of our board was uh, uh, organizations of persons with disabilities. And you have developed methodologies to, to empower persons uh, with disability, uh, to speak up, to empower them. Uh, how did that work? So um, the first step for empowerment, in my view, is uh, to have the opportunity to participate. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, there, some people are already very strong in, in their self-advocacy, but others would need to grow into that. And I think uh, participation is a very important step uh, to, the, to do this. The members of the board, of course, were already very experienced uh, okay. advocates. Okay. Okay, so we know now where it comes from and how it is uh, designed. Uh, let's look at uh, the reality, how it works, how it operates. Can you give examples on, 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 on what we can find there, how it works? Yes, so um, there may be people who don't know why it's important to uh, have organizations of persons with disabilities participate so they can find information, for example, what do international frameworks like the UN UNCRPD or the 2030 Agenda say about the participation of persons with disabilities. Then there might be project managers who want to know at which step of my project can I meaningfully uh, include organizations of persons with disabilities and what do I have to do with it uh, for that. Then others might say, yeah, I know all this, but where do I find my partners? So we provide, for example, a, an OPD database where people can find um, organizations in their region to work with and to col collaborate with. And then there's a very rich sections with materials that you can download um, or you can even carry it on your phone because it's, um, it's also working offline. Okay. Once you uh, charge it, it will be safe to your phone and you can use it in areas of low internet connection always. And you can find checklists on how to organize uh, an inclusive meeting, how to budget for it. You can find uh, 30 recommendations, what is necessary to have an accessible venue. Mm -hmm. You find a load of uh, material there. And is that, is that material available in, uh, in, in different languages or is it on, only in English that it is available? Is it in easy to read available? Uh, what, what, what to expect when I go to that, to that website and, and look for material? So um, the project was developed over nine months last year and we only developed it in English so far. So we, okay. we try to provide uh, information in um, a very simple language, but it's not easy language, uh, and it's only available in English, but we are uh, very, very aware uh, that this is not enough. So this would be one scope for further developing the toolbox to have it translated in other languages, but this depends a lot on the users. How do they use it? What do they use? And then we can move ah, from so there. User, is it an interactive tool so users can contribute to the further development of the material or is it more static what is, what is provided? Users can uh, contribute in various ways. So we have a community of practice provided so people mm -hmm. can join this and they can share their experiences uh, on participation. They can ask questions, they can share events uh, related to the participation of OPDs. Uh, but we also have an email uh, where people can reach out to CBM okay. to ask for advice or to say, oh, no, this doesn't work for me. Please uh, change this or please improve your material. We need other material. We all know that, that the, the basic attitudes, they, they, they should be the same across, across the world. Uh, but there are also differences between continents, uh, Africa, Asia, Latin America, North America, uh, Europe. Is there, is, is there room for this type of cultural uh, elements as well? Uh, diversity in cultures, is that uh, built into the system? Or is that something uh, to be further developed in the future? I think the toolbox uh, talks a lot about um, um, a very respectful approach to, uh, to different views, to different cultures. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and I think it's very important in this regard uh, that um, people can reach out to uh, local OPDs, to local organizations, to have this integrated. It's not talking about any specific sector, but it's um, providing a general respectful uh, approach to participation. Okay, okay. You convinced me. Glad to hear that. <laughs> now, the next step. Where do I find it? Please, some publicity. This is your moment uh, to make a bit of publicity for the material. So you find the toolbox on participation.cbm.org. Uh, and uh, it's really easy to use. We were very lucky to have uh, an agency working with us uh, who uh, is specializing in uh, accessibility. Uh, so it's uh, really easy to, to look at and you will find everything there. And uh, of course you can reach out to us uh, via participation at cbm.org uh, if you have any questions or recommendations. Please say that again because not everybody will have s uh, speech to text uh, on, uh, on his or her uh, device. What is, the, what is the web address where people should go to? The website is participation.cbm.org. Perfect, perfect. Um, you talked already about a, f a few directions, a few areas in which you would like to further develop uh, the, the, the material. Can you uh, summarize a bit what, what the future orientation uh, might be of that work? So uh, the languages I already mentioned, yes. um, so French is definitely on, on our list. Okay. Um, but it will very much depend on the feedback of users, uh, what we will uh, develop further. We had already some contacts, for example, with an organization focusing on deafblind uh, uh -huh. persons. And we feel that um, the material could be further improved in this section. So this could be uh, something that we improve in the future and develop further. People having very little uh, speech, persons with severe intellectual disabilities, is there something in it for them? We have provided information um, on how uh, to organize inclusive participation processes for um, all these uh, groups. But the, uh, the information can, of course, uh, become more detailed in the future. Now there is, on every uh, aspect, there is some information that you can find. Okay, good, clear. And, and just to have that very clear as well, using the material, access to the material, it is for free. There is no cost. Yes, it is for free and uh, you will find really a wealth of information, e even uh, case studies we have, we've provided. So you can carry them with you online, offline, and everything is free and you can register for free if you're an OPD. Great, great, great. Um, Veronica, we, we slowly have to, to, to wrap up our, our discussion here. I really hope that your tool will, will uh, further uh, fly and develop. Any, any idea on number of people that used it already or uh, people that visited the site? Uh, you have data on that? I don't have data yet. Uh, we have presented it just in November last year mm -hmm. and uh, since then uh, we presented it various times. There has been a lot of interest um, and people uh, gave a lot of very positive feedback Great. and a lot of people already joined also uh, the community of practice uh, that we created. So we are looking forward uh, to a nice future for our tool. Uh, but it lives with the users, so I would encourage everyone to look at it and see whether it's helpful for you and get in contact with us so we can uh, work further on the participation of organizations of persons with disabilities. Great, Veronica. This is the type of innovation uh, we need, I think. It is developed in an international uh, network and cooperation. It is developed to support uh, persons with disabilities to actively take part in society. So, a great uh, project. Back to the conference here. Uh, Veronica, in, in a few hours from now, uh, this building, building will look much more empty and there will be much less energy around, I'm sure. What will you take uh, home from this, from this conference? What made a sort of unforgettable impression on you being here th those three days? 
Well, the best impression is outside the, the big meeting rooms, uh, meeting so many uh, people with uh, a lot of motivation and a lot of good ideas. Some of the ideas I found uh, could uh, be important also for the further development of the toolbox, so there is a lot of scope for collaboration in the future. Uh, with all the people I have met here. So this will uh, definitely not be my last Zero Project conference. Great. Veronica, thank you very much for this very informative and very uh, nice uh, chat. And you summarized, I think, in your last sentence what the Zero Project is about. It is about networking. It is about exchange of ideas. It is about innovation. Dear Zero Pro Project friends, see you later. Bye.